Thanks, everyone. I'll skip all the affiliations because they're way too long. But I'm interested in plants. And today, I want to share with you some mysteries about our breathing biosphere, um, ways that new satellite imaging technology enables us to look at plants at a global scale as never before, um, mysteries this new technology has shown us for the first time, and how we all can get involved to help solving the mysteries. So I like to think of vegetation as a global lung that helps to exchange uh, carbon dioxide, water, and nutrients, um, actually also including photosynthes photosynthesizing organisms in the ocean, but today we'll focus on the plants. And so I'd like to share some new insights about how we watch the biosphere breathe and what some of these new mysteries are, and again, characters we can all play in the story. Oh. There we go. Um, some of the first ways we've watched um, the biosphere uh, function is by looking at carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And you too can go to Scripps CO2 program's website, and that's where we are today. And all these little oscillating, small oscillating wiggles actually are uh, largely the terrestrial biosphere breathing in and out, exchanging CO2 and affecting the concentration on annual time skips. So the first way we used to, we've watched the biosphere breathe is looking at the atmosphere. The second way we've done this is by running around all over the planet and measuring vegetation in so many different ways, from gas flux from towers, measuring stem uh, respiration, yes, plants breathe out too, measuring leaf area, and from Massachusetts to Tanzania, um, and everywhere in between, all these fluxes are measured. And we keep track of how vegetation productivity works like a bank account. Photosynthesis brings carbon in, respiration removes carbon and puts it back in the atmosphere. And New, new technologies using satellites actually enable us to use uh, measures of light and fixed estimates of the efficiency of photosynthesis, how much carbon is fixed per unit light, to actually map uh, global productivity. And you can go to the University of Montana Numerical Dynamic Simulation Group videos and actually watch the planet breathe in and out, in and out. It's really cool. The mystery, one of the big mysteries is that between 2000 and 2009, global productivity has decreased relative to its, its, its status in past decades. And this has happened from uh, pine bark beetle invasions in California to losses of agricultural productivity in rain-fed southern Africa. <coughs> and so some of the biggest science questions that we're all working on, including uh, my lab group, uh, the Kaler Group at uh, Geography um, and uh, the Bren School, is looking at this epsilon factor in this light use equation and trying to figure out how does vegetation actually, uh, well, the efficiency of vegetation to fix carbon changes, and current models only have one value for global areas. Um, we don't know how mature forests versus young forests operate, and what happens to rain when you cut down trees is another big answer. Our group maps vegetation at all scales and strongly believes and getting involved, as well as you can also get involved in volunteering at Cedric Reserve and other places, including going to the March for Science in DC to fund science to better understand these mysteries for the biosphere. So thank you very much. Kazi Kubo and Swahili means the work is big.